let's let's dig into the next set of Twitter files. Now, this came out today. I haven't read this, uh, so I have no idea what we're about to find out, but let's do it together, shall we? The Twitter files part eight, how Twitter quietly aided the Pentagon's covert online PSYOP campaign. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay. Despite promises to shut down covert state-run propaganda networks, Twitter docs show that the social media giant directly assisted the U.S. military's influence operations. Oh, my gosh. You guys... You guys do you guys remember that, that commercial? The military recruitment commercial about psyop warfare was the new warfare you remember this this came out maybe a year ago now anyway it was a video trying to recruit people but it wasn't about missiles and guns it was like the new warfare is psyop warfare that's how we control governments that's how we manipulate the masses that's how you win wars come join us win the war and it's like Whoa! So they're admitting that PSYOP warfare is the way to control people. Wow. Just wanted to remind everyone, get that fresh in your head when we dive back into this. Okay. Twitter has claimed for years that they make concerted efforts to detect and thwart government-backed platform manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fucking rich. Here is Twitter testifying to Congress about its pledge to rapidly identify and shut down all state-backed covert information operations and deceptive propaganda. Shall we read this? I I gotta read this. I I, I gotta read. This is what Twitter claimed. Okay, here's their here's, here's Twitter testifying. Okay. Combating attempts to interfere in conversations on Twitter remains a top priority for the company. We continue to invest heavily in our detection, disruption, and transparency efforts related to state-backed information operations. I just started laughing because we continue to invest heavily. <laughs> and you, you know where that money's coming from. This is the FBI. The, the, the FBI has given them that money to invest in, in the detection, disruption, and transparency efforts. Uh, our goal is to remove bad faith actors and advance public understanding of these critical topics and, of course, replace them with, with upstanding citizens like Jim Baker and Yoel Roth. Twitter defines state-backed information operations as coordinated platform manipulation efforts that can be attributed with a high degree of confidence to state-affiliated actors. State-backed inf... Wait, hold on. So, okay, so I, I have to bring it back to Twitter files number seven. We just read it. Twitter itself, the company, had a huge group of people that worked at the FBI previously and then since moved to Twitter. So now there's a huge contingency of, of former FBI employees now residing in Twitter. I just got to point that out. You know, keep that fresh, you know. Right. So state-affiliated actors. Does that mean people that don't work at Twitter? And once you start working at Twitter, are you no longer a state-affiliated actor? Because Jim Baker, I don't know if he, you know, he worked at Twitter, but he still had his clearance. Remember, we learned that in, in Twitter File 7. State-backed information operations are typically associated with misleading, deceptive, and spammy behavior. These behaviors differentiate coordinated manipulative behavior from legitimate speech on behalf of individuals and political parties. Hmm. Whenever we identify inauthentic activity on Twitter, that means that meets our definition of an information operation and which we are able to confidently attribute to actors associated with the government. We share comprehensive data about this activity. Notice a government. So in my head, I'm thinking they they let me let me put this another way. I, I kind of mentioned this earlier. Well, we got the Russian state, you know, actor, whatever, Russian state account, Russian affiliated government account, Chinese affiliated organization or Chinese affiliated account. We don't have those in America. 
right? We don't, or, or in Europe, like there's no like Swedish government agency affiliation. Um, but now that I think they're actually starting to do that now. Uh, I think Norway, Norway had one and it actually, they accidentally put Nigerian and they were like, although we really love Nigeria and we respect them, we are actually Norway. Can you please make it Norway? Right. But I think that that's more what they're referring to. Other government state actors, not America, because America, you know, we're good here. We're, we're good. We're, we're all gravy. Okay, let's move on. But behind the scenes, Twitter gave approval and special protection to the U.S. military's online psychological influence ops, despite knowledge that Pentagon propaganda accounts used covert identities. Twitter did not suspend many for around two years or more. Some remain active. Okay, I have to say, can we please get rid of the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act? Because inside that bill, on page like 1,700 or some shit, the Smith-Munt Act, which was tried to be pushed in 2012 and got snuck into that bill, allowed state media, state government to lie to the American citizens. It allowed the propaganda that they were creating for over overseas this was a cold war the cold war era um you know government action to promote disinformation for the rest of the world but they weren't allowed to lie to the american citizens well because of the ndaa they were then allowed to lie to american citizens thus being able to use their psyop warfare on american citizens and we are seeing it come to fruition now i'm finding out that twitter was a part of this we know the FBI was a part of it. What other companies are using this? Facebook, of course. Twitch, sure, of course. YouTube, well, hell yeah, why not? Google, they hated Trump. They changed their entire algorithm in 2016. You know this? Zach Voorhees, the Google whistleblower, went to Project Veritas in 2019 and exposed the whole thing. In 2017, a U.S. Central Command uh, CENTCOM official sent Twitter a list of 52 Arab language accounts we used to amplify certain messages. The official asked for priority service for six accounts, verification for one, and a whitelist abilities for the others. The same day CENTCOM sent the list, Twitter officials used a tool to grant a special whitelist tag that essentially provides verification status to the accounts without the blue check, meaning they're exempt from spam slash abuse flags, more visible, likely to trend on hashtags. The CENTCOM accounts for the list tweeted frequently about the U.S. military priorities in the Middle East, including promoting anti-Iran messages, promotion of the Saudi Arabia U.S.-backed war in Yemen, and the accurate U.S. drone strikes that claimed to only hit terrorists. Now, notice that accurate was in parentheses, or excuse me, in quotes, because you know that, I mean, the American government has, has killed many civilians over the years, including Americans. Thanks, Obama. You know, fuck the military industrial complex. I, I can't stand it. I don't want to be the world police. I, I think they're causing wars that don't need to be wars. CENTCOM then shifted strategies and deleted disclosures of ties to the Twitter accounts. The bios of the accounts changed to seemingly organic profiles. One bio read, uh, Euphrates Pulse. Another used an apparent deep fake profile picture and claimed to be a source of Iraqi opinion. One Twitter official who spoke to me said he feels deceived by the covert shift. Still, many emails throughout the 2020 show the higher level Twitter executives were well aware of the DOD's vast network of fake accounts and covert propaganda and did not suspend the accounts. For example, Twitter lawyer Jim Baker mused in July of 2020 email about an upcoming DOD meeting that the Pentagon used poor tradecraft in setting up its network, and we're seeking strategies for not exposing the accounts that are linked to uh, each other or the DOD or the USG. Hmm. Stasia Cardiel, another Twitter attorney, replied that the Pentagon wanted an SCIF and want uh, and may want to retroactively classify its social media activities to ob ob obfuscate their activity in this space. And that may represent an overclassification and avoid um, embarrassment. 
In several other 2020 emails, high-level Twitter executives slash lawyer discussed the covert network and even re re uh, <clears throat> recirculated the 2017 list from CENTCOM and shared another list of 157 undisclosed Pentagon accounts, again, mostly focused on Middle East military issues. In May of 2020 email, Twitter's Lisa Roman emailed the DOD with two lists. One list was accounts previously provided to us. Another list Twitter detected. The accounts tweeted in Russian and Arabic on U.S. military issues in Syria slash ISIS, and many also did not disclose Pentagon ties. Yeah, of course. Why would they, why would they want that revealed? Many of these secretive U.S. military propaganda accounts, despite the detection by Twitter as late as 2020, but potentially earlier, continued tweeting through this year. Some not suspended until May of 2022 or later, according to records I reviewed, although they just stated in, in a, a couple tweets back that some are still tweeting. August of 2022, a Stanford Internet Observatory report exposed a U.S. military covert propaganda network on Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and other apps using fake news portals and deep fake images and memes against the U.S. foreign adversaries. I mean, my goodness. Of course, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, other apps. What other apps? I mean, how much fake bullshit has come out of Ukraine that then has been debunked? They they used a they used a video game clip, a literal clip from a video game, and they were like, oh, Russian planes get shot down. Like, yeah, Slava Ukraine. And it's like, oh, that was a video game. Uh, you're fucking lying. All right, we know there's Nazis there. They're they're not quiet about it. They're proud of it. Anyway, I don't want to derail uh, away from this. The U.S. propaganda network relentlessly pushed narratives against Russia, China, and other foreign countries. They accused Iran of threatening Iraq's water security and flooding the country with crystal meth, and of harv harvesting the organs of Afghan refugees. What about the fentanyl coming across the American border, you fucking jackasses? Huh? America right now is being flooded with fentanyl. The, the amount of fentanyl coming across the border spiked 800% after Biden became president. Where's the fucking outcry in that? Uh, anyway. The Stanford report did not identify all of the accounts in the network. But one they did name was the exact same Twitter account Sencom asked for whitelist white privileges in 2017 email. I verified via Twitter's internal tools. The account used was an AI-created deep fake image. Oh, wonderful. In subsequent reporting, Twitter was cast as an unbiased hero for removing a network of fake user accounts promoting pro-Western policy positions, pro-military uh, operations, I should say. Because I refuse to believe Western policy is based on these fucks in charge. All right? Nah, we can't give them that. Uh-uh. No. Western policy is freedom, baby. And let's bring it back to number one. Meter covering the story described Twitter as an evenly applying its policies and proactive in suspending the DOD network. Bullshit. The reality is much more murky. Twitter actively assisted CENTCOM's network going back to 2017 and as late as 2020, knew these accounts were covert and designed to deceive, to manipulate the discourse, the, a violation of Twitter's policies and promises. They waited years to suspend, yeah, because they knew it. Twitter's comms team was closely in touch with reporters working to minimize Twitter's roles. When the Washington Post reported on the scandal, Twitter's officials congratulated each other because the story didn't mention any Twitter employees and focused largely on the Pentagon. Nice job, guys. We got them to focus on the Pentagon instead of us, even though we were 100% complicit. The conduct with the U.S. military's covert network stands in stark contrast with how, uh, how Twitter has boasted about rapidly identifying and taking down covert accounts tied to state-backed influence operations, including Thailand, Russia, Venezuela, and others since 2016. Everything changed in 2016. Now, everything changed in, in 2001. It started in 2001 and has been a downhill uh, on a downhill slope ever since. 
Here is my reported piece, uh, more detail. Uh, and that's that's Lee Fang, if you want to check that out. Uh, we'll just go to his, it's, uh, I think it's LH Fang, if you would like to check it out for yourself. Jeez. So, all right, we got we got the FBI paying. We got the Pentagon uh, saying we're, we want these fake accounts so that we can manipulate the masses, manipulate the Middle East, manipulate the Western uh, societies to convince them that everything's going as planned, that everything's hunky dory, and we're we're absolutely kicking ass in the Middle East, dude. All this shit is a lie. History is written by the victors, correct? Well, the present is now written by the victors. And the victors are the people who are able to control everyone. And we have been controlled. <laughs>